So in this video, we are heading to Japan. I was lucky enough to get offered to go on the trip with ASICS to do different things, but in this video, we're gonna tell you all about it. So day one in Japan, I'm going to go for a little run this morning, do a bit of sightseeing, um, hopefully not get lost. I think it's like a 6k loop, so I might do it twice and it doesn't feel too cold. My weather app said minus one, but it feels warmer than that. So yeah, just really excited to be here, just looking out the window this morning. So we obviously got here when it was dark, so you couldn't see anything, but it looks like an amazing location. So yeah, just really excited to see what we get up to today. It looks like I'm literally going to run there and stop because there's a crossing, <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon go that way and there was someone running that way. But he stopped running. Good morning! <laughs> Running around in Japan. So cool. I've got about 10 more minutes. Well, 14 minutes. So I'm gonna run around that way for like seven minutes and then I'll come back the same way rather cool. than around the back. Yeah. So then because I'd love to get a picture by that um thing that's painted on the wall. Did you yeah, see it? yeah. So that would be cool. So I'll go around that way again, sweet and then see how far to go and then come back. Okay, cool. See you in a bit. I guess that was just over an hour, so very nice. It's such a cool little place. It's really cool, isn't it? <sighs> nice morning as well. Yeah. Sunny. The main objectives of the trip were to further develop my relationship with ASICS and obviously their team in Japan, which is where ASICS was first established. Get to explore and see more about what the brand is about, how they operate, do some different media stuff for upcoming campaigns coming later in the year and also develop with them on the different shoes that they have. As elite athletes, it is so important to us to be wearing the right shoe. To the brand, our opinions matter the most as we're the ones running in the shoes. So having our input on those was incredibly cool, doing some testing and different things. So it was gonna be a jam-packed trip. So I've never really traveled much to Asia or that side of the world. I'd heard good things about Japan, but my first impressions were 
that the people were the most incredibly friendly and helpful, polite people I've ever met. Upon just arriving in the country, you instantly just felt really, really comfortable and safe there. Even though you're miles away from home, the people there were willing to help you with anything. So yeah, just generally felt like a really, really amazing country, super clean. It just felt like everyone really cared for the environment and the place that they were living. It's definitely somewhere where if you haven't been, I'd recommend going. And after the trip, I now would love to go back. My guess is like chopsticks. Really? Oh my god. I really love it. Oh wow. I really love it. No, on the chopsticks in Japanese. Yeah. Here. That's Lucy. The crowd looks so cool. Thank you. This is Lucy. So the first day we started pretty early, we had quite a lot planned in the schedule. The first thing was going to the Attics Museum, which is actually pretty cool. It's quite top secret. So basically behind the front reception, not much more filming or images can happen. Kind of showing the progression from the very first ASIC shoe all the way to now, and also the different things that they ventured into in the beginning, which was loads of different types of equipment. It wasn't just shoes. So it was amazing to watch and hear the journey of the company and how it has grown into be this worldwide brand that it is today. That was just an amazing experience for us just to kind of see the development of the shoes and see how we got to the shoe that I'm racing in now. We was also lucky enough to have the tour by Mr. Kayano himself, which is actually the person who has designed and created my main shoe that I use for training, which is the Kiano or the Gel Kiano. I do pretty much all of my long steady miles in this shoe. So to actually meet the man behind the shoe was a really, really cool experience. We actually also discovered that he created that shoe in 1993, which was the year that I was born. So I feel an even more special connection to the shoe that I'm wearing. The little Keanu. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> so cool. I like that it has 93 on it as well. I didn't know they were making 93. It was meant to be. Yeah. Do you think they'll fit on pickle? <laughs> And then from the ASICS Museum, we actually went into the kind of main headquarters where the majority of the staff actually work when they're based in Japan. We didn't see a lot of it, but it looks like an amazing place to actually work. And there was a huge basketball court basically where they have lunch. So it'd be pretty cool to just shoot some hoops and play some basketball when they're not in their meetings and working really hard. <laughs> it's never going in there, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> That was a really cool experience for the first day, just to see two major aspects of the ASICS brand. So yeah, the main day that I guess was the most important day of the trip was that we were going to visit the ISS, which is the Essex Institute of Sport. Be 
busy day on the schedule today so I just had a meeting with the shoe development guys so discussing how much I like the shoe, what elements I'd like to improve, where I think that we can do that and obviously I've done a bit of testing in some new models that could be coming out in the future. Yes, it's just really exciting to be part of that development team. We also are going to be looking at the shape of my foot. That may kind of lead them to say I would be better in a certain shoe over another, which is really exciting. Behind us, we're going to be doing some looking at the way that I run, so looking at my biomechanics, the way that I run differently in different shoes, different models. I think we're also going to be doing another lab test today, so looking at the substrates, the way that what I'm breathing out when I'm running at different paces. But yeah, it's just really exciting in here. It's kind of super space age, lots of really really cool technology cutting edge stuff so yeah just excited to see what else we get up to today not many people have entered behind the doors i don't actually know if many elite athletes have gone in there before us i think we probably saw maybe five percent of what is actually going on in the iss which makes sense that in a really competitive market competitive running shoes so they don't want any of their top secret information to get leaked to any of the other brands that are their competitors it just made me feel extra special to actually be going in there and seeing the different things that are going on but the main thing that we were going there for was obviously to develop and progress the current race shoes that we are wearing so the first session that i had of the day was actually to sit down and provide my feedback on my current race shoes some prototype shoes that I've been testing how I've been finding those shoes which feels incredibly cool because obviously I'm going to massively benefit the more forward thinking we are with this shoe but also the brand is going to benefit too so the partnership just works hand in hand in developing this shoe into the fastest shoe possible for us as elite athletes. My running form can stay quite good for most of the marathon that I run. Probably in the last 10K, my my running form will start to go downhill slightly. It happens more when the in the environment is more extreme. So when I race in Hawaii and it's super hot, super humid, then I think the fatigue comes maybe slightly earlier. Things like cramp happen, but more because of the climate than, than anything else. So, and as I get nearer to a race, so I'll do some more some short intervals but we were always nervous to put me in spikes just because of the amount more I would use the calf muscles so we kind of stick to more of the general race shoe than, than spikes. So we also did some other testing in the day. The second one was a bit like I've done before where it's a biomechanical testing but also looking at my amount of force that I'm putting through the ground when I'm running. <laughs> How do they make it warm? It's in a vending machine. That they can Keeping it warm. Mind blown. Mm. Uh, Completely. <laughs> This test wasn't done on a treadmill, it was actually done on a track where I would run forward and back through motion sensor cameras. The team would pick up all the data and be able to show how the shoe is working for me and make adaptions to the shoe. So the first shoe that I wore was actually just a race flat standard shoe that you can get that would be perfect for road running or track running. So we did all of the baseline tests basically using this shoe, starting off at around 4.45 per kilometer and then getting down to pretty much as fast as I could run. So around 2.40 per kilometer, somewhere down there. <laughs> Then we would change shoe into one of the shoes that they're developing. I would run all the tests again. So the craziest thing was going from the just the normal um, running flat shoe to then putting on the super shoe or the edge when they said just do the jogging pace and it was like 340 per K or something 
and it just felt like so easy. It's crazy how much of a difference it makes. Really, really cool to get to do that. I actually don't know any of the data from this testing. I can obviously know on feeling how the shoe felt for me. Anyone who was asking, what was the data? What did it mean? What did this? I actually don't know. And I don't know if I will be allowed that data. That's how top secret it is. This is the best I've ever looked. that I did was similar again to what I'd done at Red Bull where I was running on a treadmill with the mask that is looking at what I'm breathing out as I'm running. On this one I used two different pairs of shoes which are being developed so that they can compare how I responded to one shoe to the other. Am I more economic in one shoe than the other? Also my feedback of how the shoe felt. So again I don't know what any of that data actually said, but I'm sure that it will be extremely valuable data for them to use at ASICS. It was just fun to be able to kind of really give back to the brand that has supported me from obviously when I was injured last year all the way to now. So yeah, really, really cool to see all of that and be able to kind of help out and give my opinion and obviously be able to provide data that is really useful to them as well. Oh, difference in the long time. Yeah, lots of racial differences. Is this the average, like the yes. average European and average Japanese? Model. Yeah. Crazy. So if the right foot is smaller, it would move further. But then if it's this width is this part. Yes. So because it's wider as well, it's got less mm -hmm. space in this area, mm -hmm. and then it's moving forward and backwards. So the blister here would make sense. So it's, it's not really a shoe problem, it's a me problem. Um, <laughs> no need to, if, uh, should I say something? No, please, all the, everything. All is available, yeah, very much. The feedback is very, very good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's, it's some tea Royal Red. <laughs> from the UK. Thank you very Thank you very much. This is one of my favorite oh, ones. Good. Yeah, <laughs> well done, Mason Royal Red. Yes. Thank you. I, I hope you enjoy it. it. <laughs> yeah, with my, with my wife, not only me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the next day after the ISS, we had a bit more of a touristy day. We was treated to a trip in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan before it moved to Tokyo. It was just a stunning location, see the different temples that are there and just get to feel like we actually experienced a bit more of Japan and its culture. We were really lucky to get to go and do a traditional tea ceremony, which was just a really unique and special experience and something that I really enjoyed doing. But yeah, it was just a really nice day. We'd worked really hard collecting all the data the day before and we got to enjoy this day, seeing a bit more of Japan, trying out some of the traditional foods. Yeah, so it was just a really nice day. Cause I just wanna see the light. I'm so sick of waiting uh, Getting too restless to be in this dusty town I've heard of this place where People forget and you get another try
wish and one bow in the end. How are you? Yes. Cause I just wanna see the light. Yeah, I just wanna see the light. The final day in Japan was a big photo shoot day. We was up super early. We were leaving at like 5.30 a.m. to get a sunrise photo shoot. The guys with the steel camera must be like, come on, I'm gonna get this shot. <laughs> Thank you very much. This will be part of a big global campaign that is coming later in the year. So I'm super excited to share that when it does come live and all of you can see it, see the amazing images and media that was created on that morning. But I think as an athlete, these things are just super fun to do. And sometimes they're difficult because they take quite a lot of time and energy. But at the same time, I do try to enjoy them because I'm not going to be doing this my whole life, so it's one of those things where I just try and enjoy the moment, um, have a bit of fun with it. Always enjoy working with the different photographers that come to these different shoots, and it was an amazing sunrise. We were super lucky with that, and we were just so well looked after by the team. Obviously, it was cold, but they had brought these massive heaters to keep us warm. At the end of each shot, there was someone with a warm jacket or a warm blanket, so it just feels nice to be super looked after and really well appreciated by the brand. Yeah, so I actually did pretty well keeping up my training whilst I was in Japan. I trained at least twice every single day. One of the days I did manage to train three times. I was really, really lucky that Wahoo Japan actually provided a Wahoo kicker bike in my hotel room. So most mornings I was up at 5.30 and just straight on the bike getting a session in before the busy day that we had. We also was really lucky that the team in Japan at ASICS found a pool for me to swim at. We did two swims there in just one of the local 25 meter pools. Bloody boiling jacket. <laughs> 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 the pool was extremely warm, which Normally when I'm outdoor swimming and I get cold in the pool, I'd be like, yeah, give me a warmer pool. But actually this was pretty hot. So it felt a bit like I was already starting my Kona prep early doing some heat adaptation, but managed to get two solid swims in. No complaints there. So nice and warm. <laughs> And then running wise, most of my running I either did first thing in the morning or at the end of the day, just basically doing some sightseeing whilst I was running. So most of my running was around Harbourland in Kobe, which was where we were staying. It was pretty much like a five minute jog down from the hotel. Yeah, and that was just really nice. Nice to run at sunrise and also to run at night and see all of the lights that were on, like the Ferris wheel and the different buildings that were lit up. So yeah, just really, really nice to be able to maintain some fitness. I was saying in a previous video that whenever we're traveling to do different things with different sponsors, it's nearly impossible to actually build on your fitness. And actually it feels like quite a lot of hard work just to maintain my fitness but super happy that I managed to get quite a bit of training in during this trip and looking forward to the next block of work once I get home. Okay, thanks for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed seeing a bit of a behind the scenes of our trip to Japan. Stay tuned as we are heading straight off to Germany in our next video to go and visit my sponsor Cube. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned for that one. Lightweight.